Hey guys, I'm Animal Athlete Pete Rubish, and I'm just gonna be walking you guys through how to deadlift. Let's go! Let's go! There are two ways to deadlift. You can do conventional or you can do a sumo deadlift. I prefer conventional and conventional is more explosive. I would say that you have to put less of an emphasis on technique with conventional. Um, a lot of guys just get down and rip it up, but sumo, you really have to have that technique dialed in. So I'll walk you through a little bit of both. Um, for conventional, I prefer a more narrow stance. And if you're, if you're somebody with like a, a lankier type build, which is what I would consider myself, then you want to have a closer stance. If you're stockier, bigger guy, you probably want to go a little wider out here. I've just noticed that works best for the two body types. So I keep it in pretty close here. I turn my feet out slightly. I have a very subtle, um, my toes are pointed out very slightly here. I don't point them straight ahead. I feel like this helps engage the glutes a little more. And you'll see that the bar is lined up over the middle of my foot. So I don't want to be right up here. A lot of people get right up to the bar. The problem is that when they're up to the bar, they'll pull and their shins and knees will get in the way, kicking the bar out in front of them. So their first initial movement will be the bar moving forward rather than up. So that's why you don't start too close. And then the same thing can happen if you start too far away. The bar's out in front of you, the first movement is gonna be pulling it back in. So you don't wanna kick the bar out in front and you don't wanna have to pull it in. So the best way to do that, line up middle of the foot. So I'm gonna get down here like this. I'll take a big breath up here and I'll kinda, I'll feel my lats get tight. I'll just, it's a very subtle movement downward. My chest will come up. I'll move my arms down. That locks my lats in tight like this. And then I'll go down, I'll reach down and grip the bar. I use a mixed grip. So I've got one hand over, one hand under. And that's probably the most secure grip you can use. A lot of people, not a lot, but some people will do a hook grip where they, they grip the bar like this. And that works better for people with longer fingers, bigger hands. You'll struggle with that if you have smaller hands, which I do. And people with smaller hands, meaning um, their fingers aren't as long, they have a tougher time gripping the bar. So in that case, you probably want to do the over-under when the weights get heavy enough. So I'll get down here. I generally have the underhand a little further out, so it's not quite equal on both sides, but it's very close. The overhand will be right on the edge of the knurling and the underhand is a little further out from the end of the knurling. So it's pretty close, but not quite. And then my first initial movement, I'm gonna lock the lats in. So I'll kind of rotate my elbows. Just rotate your elbows like this, and that'll get your back real tight. And that'll kind of lift the chest up too. And so that's... That's the cue you want to think about when you get down. After you get your grip, rotate your elbows, lift your chest up, pick your head up. I'm not a fan of a neutral head position. Some people tend to look down almost, and that's called a neutral head position. I like to look up. I feel like that brings your chest up, and that helps you with your lockout a little more. So that's what I would do. But that'll build, that'll build a stronger lockout, just having the lats engaged. A lot of people, when the weight gets heavy, their lats will tend to round forward. And that's normal, but you want to reinforce the technique with lighter weights, and it'll carry over to the heavier weights. So when you're down there, chest up, lats engaged, and it's okay to have a little upper back rounding. So this is okay. You don't want your lower back rounding, but your upper back can round. It's still safe. You won't, you won't tear anything. It's perfectly normal. So I'm gonna get down here again. And you'll notice I bring my hips through very quickly. Like you wanna be as explosive as possible. So once technique has been emphasized, that's the first thing you wanna think about, then you think about speed. But speed should not come before technique. A lot of people, I made this mistake for many years. All I cared about was speed. What you'll see a lot of people do that's different, they will just get down here like this. And they'll just try to pick it up quick. Without thought to form. It's all about speed for them. 
and that will only get you so far. If you just focus on speed, once you get to around 90%, you'll start to miss lockouts. So you really gotta get the lats tight, think about all that, think about picking the head up, chest up, and that will carry over. Now sumo, I don't really sumo too much, but this one, I would say it's, it's more important to have your form locked in. So I'm gonna give it a go here. Sumo, you're gonna come out wider here. This one, you'll actually be closer to the bar. I will have my, uh, my legs almost touching the bar. And the, as you can see, I'm actually bleeding now. That's good, the bar's keeping close then. I didn't even realize that. I'm gonna point my toes out slightly. I've got them evenly. I've got my foot placement pretty even here. And I'm gonna stay tight. I'm gonna try to bring my hips as low as possible. I don't have a lot of mobility here, so this little, it, it puts a little strain on, but I'm gonna lock my lats in like this. Rotate those elbows back. And I'm not real good at sumo, but that's a rough overview of that. And I can really feel it in the hips, I don't do it often. So it's, it's giving me a little bit of a stretch, but you wanna keep more of a neutral spine on sumo. For sumo, I feel like it's more important to have a neutral spine than unconventional. And you really wanna, once again, emphasize rotating the elbows, keeping the lats tight. Some people go wider. I've seen people go very narrow too. They pull in almost a conventional way with a sumo stance. You can do that too. There's, there's plenty of options here with deadlifting. You kind of have to do trial and error to figure out what works best for you. But I've seen people get close to like this and pull almost conventional where they'll just, that's another option. So there's a few different ways you can deadlift. Um, I prefer conventional obviously, but give them all a try. Recap, kind of the main cues are, you want a more narrow stance if you have a leaner build. If you're stockier, go a little wider. If you're a bigger guy, have the bar over the middle of the feet. That's another cue. I go a little um, off center with my grip. The, the overhand will be in a little closer. The underhand will be a little further out. And part of that is because the uh, the underhand kicks the bar out in front. Your wrist tends to rotate in. So when you go a little wider, you can kind of compensate for that rotation and the bar will stay in better. And then when you get down, you want to pick your head up, pick your chest up, rotate your elbows in. That'll engage your lats. And then you'll be really tight and you can basically pull. Lock your weights out a lot easier. So those are my main cues for the deadlift. This is Pete Rubish with Animal Pack. Just remember on the deadlift, attack the bar, keep your lats tight, and I'll see you guys tomorrow at the cage. Tried for 900 pounds.